<laughs> two years and a half ago, I was um, in, in Berlin, living in Berlin. I just graduated from my business school and I was doing my final internship, uh, mostly working on web marketing for on a medium-sized company. My brother, uh, William, was uh, also graduating from his business school in, in, in uh, Reims. And our other brother, Antoine, just came back from New York. He spent the last two years there and the last four years working at HSBC on the financial markets. And when he came back to France, he thought it was a good time for him to um, quit his job. Our other friend, a very old friend, Xavier, also uh, left his position as a consultant um, in management for a big consulting company in France. So two years and a half ago, we were in this position where we had to ask ourselves, how do we want to live and work? Actually, there was something a bit unsatisfying about the professional experiences we had so far. Um, first, the fact that maybe um, human beings would, were treated as resources, as human resources that were easily replaceable in a system. And, um, you know, I, I got this little story. Everybody, everybody has a story like this. But when Antoine was uh, working on the financial markets one day, one of his colleagues came, uh, grabbed a cup of coffee, then he was asked to come to the HR office and he never came back. And uh, Antoine was looking at the coffee still smoking on the table and he was, he was thinking, you know, these guys have been working for, for 10 years for the company, being very dedicated to the company. And from one day to another, he was just like shut down. And, uh, you know, this, this reminds me of that something has been a bit broken in the social contract between companies and, and, and people. And what, what strikes me even more than is that these companies keep on operating the same way they did maybe 10, 20, 50 years ago. Whereas in between the technological advances we have have um, impacted our life uh, very significantly. And if you think about it, for a lot of people, for a lot of so-called knowledge wor worker, it's possible uh, for a lot of us to work from, from anywhere uh, given we've got a laptop and a smartphone. So when we started to think about this and we started, when we started to envision a world where, where actually we would, all of us would work on, on his own and maybe from his home, we, we thought, you know, we felt that there was something wrong, you know. Technology is not meant, I think, to isolate us. And maybe a connected loneliness is no better than corporate slavery. So wh what we felt deeply was that uh, social interaction was actually one of the central pieces of the human puzzle. And we thought that physical spaces, physical places were actually very important in terms of social interaction because they enabled uh, people to, to build trust at a higher degree than you can do online. And then you can use the online tools to keep on elaborating on these relationships. And that's how we started to work on, on our projects called, called Mutinry. So basically, what's Mutinry? Mutinry is a co-working space for those who know. It's a collaborative uh, workspace, a shared workspace for independent workers. So you, you might find uh, graphic designers, developers, journalists. Uh, you might find entrepreneurs, startups, or, or medium-sized company that decide, instead of working on their own, to come and share an office space. But most of all, to join a community of skills and very diverse skills and talents. And um, the, the space is about 400 square meter large and can host uh, at the same time about 70, 70 people. Um, as, as this space really puts the emphasis on the collaboration and on the interaction and on the flow of ideas, what we decided to do is to, to host a lot of events. We had really, really lots of events during this year. Uh, some, some conferences like uh, we, had, we hosted three TED speakers like Lisa Gensky, for instance, here talking about the sharing economy. She's uh, actually now talking in London for the web. We also had uh, Richard Stallman, uh, one of the, uh, the, the founder of the Free Software Foundation and one of the father of Linux. Um, but we also had some more strange events. For instance, here we, uh, we, we organized an event where you would come and cut and peel vegetables to make a giant soup that were then distributed uh, out of waste, actually, out of uh, vegetables that should have been uh, thrown away. And we cooked a giant soup that were then distributed to homeless people in the street. So it, it might sound a bit strange, but all these events are moments where collision happen and where, where ideas meet and where ideas mate and then collaboration happens and follows. So uh, a year after, we, we had more than, um, we have more today than uh, 180 members. 
We've got more than 350 people that actually came and worked from this place. We hosted more than 100 events, uh, which translates to about 3,000 attendees. So the impact of the space um, is, is a lot bigger than just the members actually working in the space. But what's more interesting, I think, you know, Mutineer is a success, it's interesting, but what's really more interesting is that if you zoom out, what you realize is that we're not lonely fools. I mean, like-minded spaces are popping up all over the planet. You've got some in Berlin, you've got some in Madrid, uh, you've got some in, in San Francisco, or you've got some in, in Roma, um, you've got some in Sao Paulo and, and in Rio. I just visited them, actually, before, before coming here. And... Uh, and, and, and actually, what, what we wonder was, what happens if, uh, if, if, if these two, you know, this is the number of co-working spaces worldwide. So, so 2,500 co-working spaces worldwide. What is even more impressive is that this number has been doubling every, every year for the, fact, for the past uh, six years. Today, it's about 100,000 uh, co-workers on the planet, not to mention all the people that are impacted by co-working because they attended some events or because they were working with some co-workers. So it's a trend that is here to stay. And what we wonder was what happens if, uh, if, if these, the, these are fab labs, these are like-minded spaces, but more oriented on the production. So uh, what happens if we connect the dots? What happens if we take all these spaces and form a network of spaces and enable people with one membership to go from one to another and use the credits in one or another space? And that's exactly what we are trying to do the first global and distributed network of spaces uh, and independent workers. Uh, more important than the network of spaces is the network of independent workers. The final goal would be to be always one person away from the person you need. And you can meet this person in real life when you travel. So the project is called Copas, and we, we started to, to talk about the idea. We started to, to meet lots of different co-working spaces. And actually, all of the spaces I think we met just decided to join the network. And today, just on the idea, we've got more than 100 spaces uh, worldwide that joined. And um, it's, we were now building the product and expect to launch something by September. So I would like to, to end up with a little story because it's, it's a bit abstract when you talk about co-working. You know, wh how does it... How does it uh, translate into reality? And I wanted to, uh, to end with this story. Why am I here today? Actually, I've got um, more than five reasons to be here in Brazil today. The first one is that I've been invited by the New Cities Foundation to talk to you. That's the first reason. And the reason why I, we, we, we booked the flight tickets. It happens that the New Cities Foundation, in case of you didn't know, are based in our um, co-working space in Paris, in Vitinerie. So that's how we met. We end around glasses of wine or beer. They asked me to come here. Thank you very much. Uh, while, while, I was, you know, while I was here, I took the chance to, to visit some co-working spaces, and I worked from here. I came three weeks in advance. I stayed a bit in Sao Paulo, then in Rio. I've been to four different co-working spaces, and now I've got four more different co-working spaces on Copas. So that's the other reason, right? The other reason is that when I was in Rio, it happens that my ex-flatmate actually lives there and he was organizing a We Share Drink. A We Share Drink is actually a gathering of people talking about the sharing economy and exchanging ideas about the sharing economy. And Anton and Leonard, the founder of, um, of, the, the, of We Share, which now is a global movement of people on the sharing economy, was actually here and, he, and the, the We Share team is actually based at Mutinerie. During the events, I met some guys from Make Sense, a global movement of social entrepreneurs, and the founder of Make Sense worked from Mutiny. And the icing of the cake was that a journalist and a friend of mine that actually um, uh, used to work at Mutiny had the idea to make to shoot a documentary for Canal Plus on a big TV channel in um, in France uh, on the sharing economy. And so he was there, and he took the occasion to film us while we were meeting lots of different people and going to co-working spaces. So. so all of this happened to me thanks to Mutinery, and this is exactly how it happens. Nothing of this was planned. When I booked my tickets, I didn't know what was gonna, going to happen. The thing is, when you evolve in these kind of ecosystems, you're surrounded by opportunities. And so these kind of things constantly happen wherever, whenever I go. I think one of the biggest challenges that uh, individuals, that companies, that cities and, and, and countries will have to face in the next few years is uncertainty. How do you do things? How do you plan things? 
where 90% of the thing you use every day did not exist 10 years ago? That's the big question. And I think that in this kind of situation, when the wind is changing direction every day, what you need is not a big ship that is very good to move forward um, when the wind blows from behind, but what you learn to do is to learn to sail uh, into the unknown, and I think that these new ways of working are excellent at doing this. Thank you very much.